What are brain states? And how can we put our brain in a more holistic and future-proof state? In this video we will discover what brain states are and how we can change our brain state. A future-proof mindset is a holistic mindset to me. An almost childlike mindset that judges as little as possible and can look at all daunting things with amazement. And if you can look at everyday things with amazement and without judgment, then you will see the world from a completely different perspective. And if you see the world without projecting your own patterns into your perception, then literally a world opens up for you. But how can we give our brains a hand in this? How can we put our brain in a more future-proof mindset and state? Now, let's zoom in a little further on the human brain. From the latest neuroscience, we know that our brains can operate on multiple frequencies. And these frequencies represent different brain states. In general, the higher the frequency, the more focus we experience, but also the narrower the bandwidth is at which we can process information simultaneously. Let's briefly walk through these brain states and start at the lowest frequencies. If our brain works at a frequency between 0.4 and 4 Hz, then we call this the delta state. And this state we experience when we are asleep and unconsciousness. If our brain works at a frequency between 4 and 8 Hz, then we call this the theta state. And this state we experience during dreams or in deep meditations. And if our brains work uh, at a frequency between 8 and 13 Hz, we call this the alpha state. And we experience this state when we are relaxed. If your brain operates between 13 and 32 Hz, then we call this the beta state. We are awake and alert. And the highest state between 32 and 100 Hz, we call the gamma state. And in this state, we are very focused. For example, we are learning new things or we are solving problems. Now you can compare these brain states with the light beam of a lamp. With the gamma and the beta state, we have a very bright and focused light beam. Uh, think for example uh, of a laser beam. In the alpha and the theta state, on the other hand, we have a wider beam of light. Now imagine you're standing in a pitch black room and you are told that there is a door in the room through which you can leave the room. If we use the laser beam, we see only a very tiny part of the room. So we don't see enough space to navigate and find the door. But if we use a weak candlelight, on the other hand, we have a light that is much less bright, but allows us to see at once the fake contours and layout of our environment. And so we can find our way to the door much faster. The laser beam represents a traditional way of looking, very focused but not able to see the complete picture. And the candlelight represents more the holistic view. The light is much less bright and focused, but it does allow you to see the whole picture and therefore navigate faster to the door. And here, one state is not better or worse than the other. You just have to adjust the state to the situation you're in, or to the problem that you want to solve. Now, how can we operate from a more holistic mindset? Well, we can give our brain a hand. For example, by putting it in a more holistic position. One way to do this is literally to increase the viewing angle which we see the world around us, and start to perceive the world more from a broader viewing angle. We also call this looking from your peripheral view. So you literally bring less focus into your view and you start perceiving the world from a wider perspective. It may sound extraordinary but your brain reacts to this almost immediately. If we look at this picture we see that the pink part is your normal focus area and by consciously making your viewing angle larger and wider we become aware of what is happening in the green part, so the area in the corners of our eyes. And by doing this, as you take in new information, you will be less likely to judge and label and operate from a more holistic perspective. Another way is more difficult, but also very effective. We can also adjust our brain state ourselves. The brain state that we can achieve quite easily is the alpha state. And when you wake up in the morning, for example, your brain often remains in this alpha brain state for about 20 minutes. But sometimes also when you're in the shower or when you're completely relaxed, or when you're meditating or having a walk in nature. And this also explains that it is in these moments that we often get the, the most brilliant insights that are difficult to reproduce or contain at a later time. In the alpha state, it seems like we have extra bandwidth to process information and see connections. And this is exactly what you need if you want to solve problems from a holistic perspective. Another interesting fact is that we spend most of our first seven years of life in the alpha brain state. And this alpha brain state is also called the gateway to your subconscious mind. In other words, 
if our brains are in the alpha brain state, we can more easily access our subconscious mind. Another interesting fact is that we spend most of our first seven years of life in the alpha brain state. And this alpha brain state is also called the gateway to your subconscious mind. In other words, if our brains are in the alpha brain state, we can more easily access our subconscious mind. The fact that children during the first seven years are mainly in this alpha brain state has a big advantage, because children can learn a lot of new things at a swift pace. This is possible because all incoming information is almost unfiltered and therefore not blocked by our brain. A disadvantage of this is that unwanted information can also come in because we haven't developed our own filters or firewall that can keep harmful things out. And this filtering of harmful information is mainly done by our parents during uh, our childhood. At least that is the idea. But what it is essentially about is that our subconscious mind processes much more information than our conscious mind. It is estimated that our subconscious mind is about 30,000 times more powerful than our conscious mind. So it's not so strange that our subconscious mind comes up with smarter solutions than our conscious mind. The conscious mind is also called the rational mind and the subconscious mind the intuitive mind. And Albert Einstein said something interesting about that. The intuitive mind is a sacred gift and the rational mind is a faithful servant. We have created a society that honors the servant and has forgotten the gift. This is exactly what we discussed in the previous videos. In our educational systems, economics and in the scientific world we praise the rational mind. But actually we should use this rational mind as a servant of our intuition. But to do so we need to rediscover our intuition. In this masterclass a lot of new information will come to you. Perhaps also information that conflicts with your internal belief systems. In other words, information that wants to be blocked by your filters, because they do not fit the information patterns that are already in your brain. Perception is projection, you remember? You should therefore consume this course in the alpha state as much as possible. You will then judge much less and the information will not be blocked and will be neatly placed in your subconscious mind, where it will be used with many other pieces of information to create a new holistic view. Now, if you want to put your brain in the alpha state more often, you can do this in multiple ways. For example, by meditating 10 to 20 minutes daily, or by doing a breathing exercise where you breathe quietly for 5 to 10 minutes from your lower abdomen, and become aware of the feeling in your feet and your lower legs. And by becoming aware of what you feel in your feet and your lower legs, your awareness will shift automatically from your head towards your body. Well, we have come to the end of this video again. I hope you found this video inspiring to watch and I look forward to see you in the next video.